Hi guys, good evening. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I will be giving you my uh, season review for a show that I just finished watching moments ago. I've been watching it for the past couple of days. Oh my god, so, so good. So good. I've been meaning to sit down and just binge watch it, and I did exactly that. Oh man, it was so good. This is my season one review for the new Netflix series, Mind Hunter, which was just so well done and incredibly gripping. Oh man, it was good. And uh, before I go on, of course, please be warned that this will be a spoiler free, uh, spoiler filled, excuse me, spoiler filled review. So if you haven't started watching Mind Hunter yet, or if you have started but you're like uh, in the first couple of episodes, do not keep watching and listening, as I will be going to spoilers, or I may be referring to them periodically. So just be warned, there may and may not be spoilers in this video. Uh, so that being said, wow, what a show. What a show. I remember when it first dropped back in October, I believe. I always meant to get around to watching it, and you know what, now that uh, things have calmed down for me at least, you know, things were pretty crazy at work because of the holidays and then holiday shopping and whatnot, I have a few days to relax before I go back home for Christmas, but uh, I was able to sit down and watch this show, and it was a real treat. This show was great. Oh my god, it was just so good. Everything about it was really well done. The performances, the stories, the writing, the interesting complex characters, everything about it was extremely likable. You know, I think one of the things that I like most about it, and I'm not sure if everybody feels this way, is that it reminded me a lot of The Silence of the Lambs. Because it's like, it's about these two FBI agents, one a seasoned veteran agent who works in behavioral science, and the other is an up-and-coming rookie agent who's still learning his way, his, uh, way in the world of the FBI. Both of them team up to start profiling serial killers. And I love the fact that they finally say the word serial killer. It's either in the seventh or eighth episode, they finally start using the term serial killer because until then they call them sequence killers or organized killers. But the term serial killer doesn't come along until like almost to the end of the season. And, um, I love that. I love how it, they didn't just throw it out there right away. Like, it took several episodes to build up to them finally coming up on that name. And sure enough, that's the name that's going to, that's already immortalized so many infamous uh, murderers throughout history. But, um, you know, this show is just so well done with uh, the characters. And like, like I said, it reminded me of The Silence of the Lambs. While it's like they're not necessarily looking for active serial killers. What this show is, is about they're interviewing ones that have already been caught. And they're trying to learn more about them so they can help develop behavioral profiling to help prevent future serial killing rampages and uh, or catch them in the act or to apprehend them earlier rather rather than after they've killed uh, multiple people and uh, I love and I it has just felt very Silence of the Lambs ish because you know it's mostly about these two FBI agents and their uh, search to figure out what exactly drives these maniacs why they do what they do how they do it if there are any similarities or anything like that and uh, you know they really just analyze the hell out of everything and it's actually very very easy to follow that's what i like about it is that you know there's a lot of big fancy words that are thrown around thrown around but you can really really understand and get a grip on what exactly it is they're talking about it's very plain spoken english and uh context but it's very very easy to follow and i like that um it also has a very x-files vibe to it because in the first couple episodes, their boss, the head of the behavioral science unit, d puts them in the basement. Like, literally in the basement. Just like they did with Mulder all those years ago back on X-Files. They put the X-Files HQ in the basement of Quantico. And that's exactly what they've done to these guys. They put these uh, this, this team, because originally it was just a pair of agents... Uh, it was uh, the young Holden and then the older Bill and then uh, Wendy, the, uh, the uh, I don't know what, she, what exactly, she's not a psychologist, I think, a behavioral, behavior, behavioral psychologist, I believe. Um, she comes aboard of, uh, in a few, a few episodes in and joins the team. 
uh, they're all in the basement. Their headquarters is in the basement, and it's like uh, their their methods, their unorthodox and conventional and not so conventional methods are being questioned and falling under scrutiny with a lot of red tape and a lot of uh, federal interference and investigation. And uh, it's it's great. It's very very uh, similar to like the early seasons or like the first season of the X Files at least, with like you know uh, FBI agents trying to figure out something that nobody's ever really addressed or investigated before. And in on that show, that was like about alien existence cover up. In this show, it's about classifying and identifying serial killers. So it's they're very very similar in that retrospect. But um, yeah, I think if you enjoy The Silence of the Lambs, if you enjoy The X-Files, if you enjoy the films of, Will, of uh, David Fincher, who of course directed uh, such great suspense crime films like uh, Seven, one of my personal favorites is Zodiac, and... Um, Gone Girl. Wait, was it Gone? Yeah, Gone Girl. Yeah, you know, he's done some great films over the years. And um, I didn't realize it until after I was looking it up on IMDb. I'm like, oh my god, David Fincher is involved in this. Of course he is. This this has, it has that true crime touch all over it. You know, it, it totally, totally makes sense. It has that crime suspense thriller vibe going for it and uh, I really dig that. This show was very very fun to watch and uh, you know it gets into some pretty dark heavy stuff but I think there's enough character uh, not necessarily banter, but a good, strong dynamic between the two agents, at least. And then Wendy's becoming a stronger character as well. But in the, fir in the first couple of episodes, when it's just the two of them together, holding the young guy and Bill, the old guy, uh, the there's a great a dynamic there where they can bust each other's balls and uh, give each other a hard time in a friendly manner or sometimes in a not so friendly manner and it's very amusing to watch it's very very entertaining this whole first season was very entertaining also stellar performances by some uh, very very good actors who uh, were absolutely great and just the l right level of creepy and realism brought those right amount of creepy uh, creepiness and realism to their uh, performance as serial killers and I I just I just thought they were incredible like the guy who plays Ed Kemper uh scary the guy who played Richard Speck Oof. and then the creepy shoe fetish guy man that was a messed up episode I mean I kind of saw it coming pun intended <laughs> but, sorry but um at the same time i was like oh i see what he's doing here i see his tactic using the shoe to an elicit a re elicit a reaction out of him and get him talking and that's exactly what he did that's one of the things i admire too i really loved holden's interrogation style how it became increasingly unorthodox throughout the season like he stuck to the script for the most part but by the end of it it's like he had almost gone off the rails completely in fact, so much so where, you know, uh, I don't know if his casework involves his relationship directly, but now his girlfriend has apparently broken up with him. Will they get back together or will they stay separated come season two? Who knows? Uh, and now, of course, he's had some kind of panic at attack after being very awkwardly, uncomfortably hugged by uh, Kemper uh, in a moment where uh, they weren't under observation. And that set him into a panic attack because he was being held by a vicious, vicious murderer who gives off this great facade of being this affable, likable guy. But he's like a total sociopath. And, um, you know, and a, another thing that I loved about this show is that I think it started with the second episode. The opening scene of the second episode where it says Wichita, Kansas or Park City, Kansas. And it's focused on this guy who's some kind of office worker. Or as we see, he's like some kind of service technician for like home security surveillance or something like that. ADT, I think that's what it is. He's got these creepy glasses on and there's something about him that's just a little off. And you realize that the way his coworker talks to him and the way he looks after his coworker is kind of harsh with him. You're like, oh my god, this is a serial killer in the making and we're going to see this guy slowly in increase on his creepiness and serial killer type 
vibes and activities throughout the show, I bet. And sure enough, almost, almost every opening scene of every episode past episode two is the opening shot is him doing something. He's not killing anybody or stalking anybody per se, but he's, you can definitely feel, feel the buildup to where it's like he's a dormant volcano and with each episode, it just gets worse and worse for him and he's just ready to go off like that. And sure enough, in the final scene of the, fi of the, of the season finale in the 10th episode, right after we see Holden go into his panic attack at the hospital, uh, it cuts back to Kansas, and I'm assuming it's this guy's house or maybe the house of his first victim or one of his victims. In fact, we don't even know if he started killing anybody yet, but, or you know what, he very well could be an active serial killer and he's been a, ki a serial killer uh, since the, the first episode, but our two agents won't investigate him until season two maybe. That's what I'm hoping they're going for is that we are going to see this guy uh, encounter and meet our two main characters eventually in season two at some point. Maybe he becomes their very first active serial killer that they investigate because I think the first season was all about them classifying serial killers and giving them a name and now they can take their research into the next step and actually look for active serial killers. And I think uh, the guy playing, uh, the uh, Ed Kemper said in one of the first episodes that he believed there were at least 35 active serial killers. He didn't call himself or anybody else a serial killer, but he said there's at least 35 active um, organized killers out there, which I believe is an estimate I've heard in uh, n numerous uh, true crime documentaries and uh, whatnot is that there's about 30 to 35 active serial killers. Of course, that was back in the early 2000s and in the 90s. I think it's probably a little bit different nowadays. Who, oh, however, who knows? I guess, you know, anything's possible with the world the way it is. But it's just, uh, man, this show, this show was just so good, so well done. Very exciting stuff. Uh, like I said, if you enjoy The X-Files, if you enjoy The Silence of the Lambs, uh, if you enjoy uh, 70s nostalgia, which I feel like this uh, show did very well. I mean, Netflix gave us a great 80s nostalgia show, Stranger Things. And now we have a great uh, 70s nostalgia show. Mindhunter. Uh, and of course it has been confirmed and will be returning for a second season. However, unfortunately there is no premiere date as of yet. But stay tuned and subscribe to The Edward for further updates regarding Mindhunter Season 2. Season 1 is currently available to watch all 10 episodes now streaming on Netflix. Check it out. It's a great watch. Gets a little dark but it's got some lighter moments in between. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the night. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more review videos like this one and to stay up to date on all the news regarding uh, Mindhunter and several other films and TV shows that I follow. All right, guys, have a good one. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.